when you look at this, you know, Tornado Alley, is it an outdated concept to refer to? It's trending in that direction, Amy. We have a great article we actually published just last month. I'd, I'd urge you to check it out on Fox Weather Digital. You can find it on foxweather.com or on the Read tab on the Fox Weather app. Yes, the frequency and the coverage of supercells that produce tornadoes, it's not that Tornado Alley has gone away. It's just that the, the coverage of the supercells has shifted a little bit farther off to the east, and that's concerning for a number of reasons. One, it does take some of that rain away from the heartland, but also it's moved into heavily populated areas. We're talking about the Ohio Valley, the Mid-South, and the Lower Mississippi. That's exactly what we've seen so far this year. Tornadoes still happen in traditional Tornado Alley. It's just that this overall season has expanded, not just in coverage, but in actual time. It almost feels like it's year-round. We've certainly seen that this year, these heavily populated areas seeing what's been a, a higher end tornado threat. Yeah, there, there's an example, too. I was going to say that just this past weekend, you had the four tornadoes over St. Louis. I mean, that's the Midwest where we had the baseball size hail. We had the confirmation of an EF1 tornado. That was through St. Louis County. I mean, a lot of places here in the Central Plains and Midwest, their numbers are up. Even in the next 48 hours, we've got more of these places that are at risk. Missouri is actually only a top 10 state for tornadoes you know, how many tornadoes they get per year. But we're seeing some repetitive coverage here in the storm threat zone. Yeah. And just two quick points about this. I mean, one, I think to your, you know, initial point uh, here, Amy, Look, we have been seeing tornadoes in other areas that we typically, I think, don't see. I mean, New Jersey was a classic example of that, where we saw four tornadoes uh, over the past couple of weeks, and one of them was actually an EF2. I think the other part of this is, and I know statistically we've been talking about, you know, the fact that we've seen an uptick in the amount of tornadoes. But, you know, I think the other thing to point out here is we have social media now. You know, we have video cameras now. We have independent ways of confirming things that might have been, I think, typically a myth or, you know, well, maybe someone might have said, hey, you know, I think this is what happened here. So I think there, there's a portion of the numbers here that I think may be a little, again, this is my personal opinion here, a little overzealous. Well, here, okay, because, take that because mm -hmm. I don't think that, I don't think you can argue with this. The argument of lives lost, that is certainly a number that's well above average. So if you apply that to frequency of storms or frequency mm -hmm. of seeing it, the numbers are telling us more people are dying in some of these storms. So if you look at the projections on what future climate might do, by the way, AMS put out this, American Meteorological Society put out this study in January early of this year, and I, I'll put it, this preface on it. It was based on both emission scenarios. So whatever happens with the climate, here's the, here's the discussion that they put forward. The frequency of supercells is going to be more intense and more numerous, right? And also, it's going to be spread east, which we're already seeing in some of the trending. The Great Plains will actually have a decrease in tornadic activity, but we get an escalation of supercells outside of traditional seasons. Um, that's the study that was produced. And so that tells us this happens. So if we get more tornadoes and it's outside of normal season, do we see more deaths? Because maybe people aren't used to it, or do we have good technology that protects people? And, and I mean, of, it's a, a big question mark. Of course, one season doesn't prove a hypothesis, sure, but that's sure. exactly what we've seen so far this season. So we hope what we've seen so far this year, which has been brutally active since Jan 1, even before that, November, December of last year, hopefully we don't see this in years to come, but it does appear as though the research and the data is, is pushing things in that direction. I mean, might it also be the fact that a lot of these tornadoes are happening at night and, you know, typically people are sleeping, uh, they can't see it. So, you know, yes, do, do I think that there is a correlation between deaths and, of course, you know, the, the fact that we've been getting higher reports? Absolutely. But I think at the same time, you know, I think now we do have an independent way of verifying things. You know, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't have social media. So, you know, a lot of times people just look at radar and think, ah, that might have been something. But but we might not have paid attention to it. Right. So. Higher populations in the storm uh, zone will be really imperative that people pay attention to forecasts, pay attention to the warnings when you get them. And we've got some severe weather ahead. We'll be following all of that right here on Weather Command. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way. So make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.